Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am W2Best and I make videos about tech travel and inspiration. If you're new around here and you like this video after watching it, I would be super happy if you wanted to subscribe to this channel. That helps me out a lot and gives you all the content that I'm going to be putting out in the upcoming weeks and months. Today we are going to take a look at what to do when your laptop is overheating. I have gathered all the different solutions that I have found over a few years of trying out different laptops when they run too hot and we'll look at all of them in this video. But before we get into the solutions, how do you know if your laptop actually runs too hot? The first thing I think you should do is to just touch your laptop at the areas where you're actually using it. So usually that would be on the keyboard area, the palm rest or the touchpad area. If any of those areas are really hot to the touch, you know that you definitely need to do something about your laptop's temperatures. I also recommend you to touch the area that is below the screen, because usually that area is significantly hotter than the keyboard area or the touchpad area. So if that is really hot to the touch, you also know that you might want to do something about your laptop. Another way that you know that your laptop is running really hot is if the fans are constantly on. It's a very important thing if you're used to working in a silent office environment or a silent university environment, for example, and your laptop is running really loud fan noise most of the time. This could be very annoying for the people that are around you. And if your laptop is constantly running at a high pitched noise, you definitely want to do something to alter the temperatures of it. And last but not least, you can take a little bit more of a scientific approach and download a few utilities to see how high your temperatures actually are. I'm using CoreTemp to check my CPU temperatures and I'm using MSI Afterburner to check my GPU temperatures. These utilities are pretty self-explanatory, but let's have a quick look at them. You just download and install CoreTemp and then when you start it up, what you get presented with is very straightforward. You have the different cores and what temperature they are at currently. You have the minimum, you have the maximum, and you have the current load on each core. So as you can see currently, we are at around 50 degrees on the CPU. And in this state, the computer is silent and the fans are not running. So we start playing a video and we can see that the temperature is rising a tiny little bit, a few degrees. If we start the game, you will see the temperatures rising dramatically. But before we try that, let's have a look at MSI Afterburner. When you start MSI Afterburner, this is what you get presented with. And currently, I am not really running the GPU. So that's why it's jumping between 0 and 53 degrees like this. So just to illustrate how this looks when it's actually running something, I'm going to be starting up a game and you can see the figures. As you can see now when running the game, we have uh, 75 degrees, 70 to 75 degrees on the CPU and we have uh, 7 degrees on the GPU. And uh, this is quite good, but now we're actually just waiting in the game lobby. So as soon as the game is starting and picking up a little bit in action, then this is probably going to increase quite a bit. At this point I have started a game and you can see that the computer is kind of stabilizing around 85 degrees. And this is with the settings that I have applied. It sometimes hits those 100 degrees, but most of the time it's stable at around 85 degrees. And the GPU is at 72 degrees. If you see here that your laptop is hitting an average of somewhere around 90 to 100 degrees, you will definitely need to do something about your core temperatures. At this point I would also recommend doing a benchmark, for example with Cinebench R20. By having this base benchmark you can compare and run a new benchmark and see whether you are decreasing a lot in performance when you are getting lower temperatures. To run a benchmark in Cinebench R20 you just hit run up here and then you wait for the whole benchmark to finish and then you get a score for your computer up here. Let's get into six things that you can do to combat your laptop running too hot. 
The first and maybe the simplest thing that you can do is to alter the position of the laptop. When you have your laptop placed on just a flat surface, or maybe even in your lap or on some kind of fabric like on a sofa, it is bound to run really hot because the laptop simply can't get the airflow into itself that it needs to be able to cool off the component inside it. What you can do is to just make sure it gets lifted up a bit, either by placing some kind of small object under it that lifts it up slightly, or by just investing a few dollars in a nice laptop stand that does this job for you and lift it up properly. I've been using the Roost stand for a long time, and there's a similar model called the Next stand, and I really swear by this stand because it's so lightweight and really does the job well. One downside to it though is that you can't really use the keyboard when it's lifted up by the roof stand because the position becomes so high. So maybe if you want to still use the internal keyboard, it's better to just lift it up a little bit with using some kind of object. I've also used a few active fan stands that lift the laptop up a little bit, but also place an extra fan below it to help with the airflow and that fan you activate by plugging in one USB cable. I'm not a huge fan of it because first of all, it always keeps one USB port occupied. And second of all, I didn't think that it actually helped that much with the airflow. Maybe this was just the model that I was using at the time, but I had more success to use a simple laptop stand than to use an active fan laptop stand. The next thing you can do to limit how hot your laptop is running is to undervolt the CPU. I've been doing this in most of my laptop and usually this is a thing that really helps both with making the laptop run a bit cooler but also increases the performance slightly. You can do this either by using an application called XTU or using one called Throttle Stop. To undervolt your laptop using XTU you need to first start the application you go into advanced tuning and choose all controls and you say that you agree to change these settings. Then you come into this control panel and here you will set the core voltage offset to whatever your preferred undervolt state is. I usually put it at 125 millivolts. Then you need to set your cache voltage offset to the same. Here it's minus 125 millivolts. Then you need to apply some kind of undervolt to your internal graphics card as well. But usually I set this one to just about 50. And uh, this is the complete settings that we can apply. And then they will be applied and we don't need to change the settings. They will automatically stick with the CPU when we're setting them in XTU. To undervolt your laptop in throttle stop, you open the application, you go into the FIVR menu, and here you see what you have applied to the CPU. If you haven't applied any offsets here, you will go into the CPU core, CPU cache, and Intel GPU settings right here. So first we are in the CPU core, and here we can apply our offset voltage that I have set to 140 here but uh, I would usually set it to 125. Then we have the CPU cache that I will also set to 125. And then we have the Intel GPU that I have set to minus 49.8 millivolt. Then you apply the settings and then you need to make sure to keep throttle stop open for the settings to be applied. Also make sure that you have throttle stop turned on by clicking turn on down here and make sure to keep throttle stop open because otherwise the settings won't stick to your CPU. The third thing you can do and if you maybe find undervolting a bit scary because it can actually make your computer crash at times is to do a simple modification in just turning off the turbo boost of the CPU. So your CPU runs at a base clock speed and then it's able to turbo up to a higher clock speed when it needs the extra power to do so. But many modern CPUs turbo so much that they run super hot all of the time. And by turning the turbo off, 
you can make it run at only the base clock speed and therefore keep a much lower temperature. You can either do this in Windows settings or in XTU or in throttle stop. Let's have a look at how to do it. The first way you can turn off turbo in your laptop is to use the power plans within Windows 10. To get to the power plans, you will just need to enter power in search and then go to edit power plan. When you bring this up, you go to change advanced power settings and then you will have this processor power management. If you can't see this one, you might have to make a little change to the registry. And I will include a link to this website that is explaining how you can activate this setting within the Windows settings. In processor power management, you just need to set maximum processor state on plugged in and on battery to something else than 100%. As soon as you set this to 99% and apply the settings, turbo will be disabled through your Windows settings. If you want to use XTU to turn your turbo off, you open XTU, you go to advanced tuning and all controls, and then you need to make sure to disable turbo boost short power max enable. So if this is put to enable, you just disable it and then you apply your settings. To turn turbo off in throttle stop, you just go into the settings and then you click disable turbo right there. When you save your settings, you'll immediately have turned your turbo off and the computer will be running a lot cooler. The next thing I would recommend you to look at is actually a modification of the last one that is a little bit more advanced, but also makes you get the best of both worlds in terms of performance and temperatures. And that is to, instead of turning off the turbo to the CPU, just limit the power that the turbo can draw. This is the solution that I've been using for my current laptop and it's been working really well and giving me good performance levels but also limiting the temperature of the laptop. Let's have a look at how to do this in XTU and throttle stop. To limit the amount of power turbo can draw in XTU, you go to this setting again, turbo boost short power max enable, make sure to have this enabled and then you're able to choose turbo boost power max. I found that selecting around 25 watts on this setting gives me a good balance in between power and temperature. But you can definitely play around with this setting a bit and go anything to a 50 watt down to a 10 watt and see what you can achieve with these different settings. To reduce turbo in throttle stop, you go once again to the FIVR menu and then you have these settings here where you can set turbo ratio limits. And the max here on my CPU is 41, but you can basically just set these down and try fiddling around a little bit and see where you find your balance with performance and temperature. Then remember to apply the settings and make sure to have throttle stop turned on. With all of the fixes I mentioned so far, you don't need to open up your laptop. But with this next one, you definitely need to. And that is cleaning off the cooling in your laptop. So basically, if you open up your laptop, you probably, if you used it for a while, and if you used it in a home environment, going to find quite a lot of dust. And the dust might be on the components, but it might also be in the fans. With one of my former laptops, the MSI GS73VR, I had issues with dust collecting in the fans to the point that the laptop was running super hot and also produced this rattling loud noise that made it impossible to use the laptop in a public space. At that time, I actually left it to a professional because I didn't feel comfortable to take away the motherboard, which you had to do in that case to access the fans. So they found really big lumps of dust in the fans, cleaned it off, and afterwards it both ran more silent and also ran cooler. You can probably take off the lid of your laptop and then see how much you can remove in terms of dust. And if you feel comfortable, also unscrew the fans and clean them off as much as you can 
then replace them and try out how much difference it makes. If you don't feel comfortable taking away the fans of your laptop, just leave it to a company that is able to make those changes and you'll probably get good help from there. Last but not least, what you can do when you have opened your laptop up is to apply new thermal paste to the CPU and the GPU. Basically, your components come with a thermal paste that is supposed to lead out the heat from the component out to the cooling system. And usually this thermal paste is not very advanced because computer manufacturers try to keep prices as low as possible or maybe margins as high as possible. So what you can do is to take your laptop apart, take off the cooling system, remove that old thermal paste and then replace it with a new higher quality thermal paste. I have actually never done this, but there are a lot of users that comment on my videos that swear by doing this on a variety of different laptops. And if you feel comfortable to do it yourself, by all means go ahead and check out some videos on how to do a repaste of CPU and GPU. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, then leave it to someone that is a professional that can help you to do a repaste. If you do all of those things, I am 100% sure that you will have a laptop that runs a lot cooler than what it did when you started off in the beginning of the video. But usually, probably you just have to change one or maybe two things to make the laptop more usable than what it was from the beginning. And as I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of laptops run really hot out of the box and you need to make a few of these modifications for them to actually work well for what they are intended to work with. I know it is annoying, but really just try out a few things, work around these issues and make your laptop run much safer and much smoother for a very long time compared to if you just run it as it is out of the box. I'm gonna make a few more videos that will go a bit more in depth on these solutions. They will be coming out over the next few months. As I've been working quite a lot in June, I've been slowing down video production a little bit, but I'm trying to get back into it now during July that I have some time off and some vacation. If you like this video, I would be super happy if you subscribe to the channel, then you get all the content that I'm gonna be putting up in the upcoming weeks and months. And if you want any more information, please let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Have a really nice day and then I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!